prepared to die. I've had a wake. We had good fun. It was great. I'd rather say goodbye to my friends while I'm alive. We talked through how what I wanted, that I would like, if possible, to stay in my own home uh, until the end. Joyce and Maggie visit this hospice each week. Well, we didn't have what kids had today, we were a lot, lot happier. Oh, yeah. Here they're encouraged to reflect on their lives and to talk to their families about their death. I don't want to be resuscitated if I was to get pneumonia. And I just want to um, carry on living for as long as I can, happily, doing the things I like doing. It upsets my children. I said, what you need to understand is you could have the whole of Wembley Arena sitting around your bed, but when you actually depart this life, you do it by yourself and you go by yourself. So to be prepared for it. I'm a doctor and a terminally ill cancer patient and as part of that I realise how important dying is and talking about it. Dr Kate Granger has received widespread recognition and an MBE for campaigning to make the health service better at communicating. She says her profession often has the same difficulty discussing dying as the rest of us. I had a particular experience where um, people weren't introducing themselves to me, which just felt really wrong. That's a simple, basic step in communication, that you start a human connection and a conversation with someone. The NHS has such an infinite responsibility to take this seriously. But the problems that we come up against as healthcare professionals when, when people are dying and the problems we have around communication are because as a society we don't accept that this is an inevitable part of being a human being. Where are those two guys ideas from? Hospice staff can often see the consequences of things left unsaid. They witness how, as a society, we still need to learn that it's OK to talk about dying. It's probably our own fears. I mean, we all know we're going to die, but it's not something that we think about. Quite often, families put off talking about death till, sometimes till it's too late. And there's this moment of, I wished I'd have asked, you know, what his or her last wishes were. I've bought my candles. I've chosen the books I'd like my mum to read to me. I've kind of painted a picture in my own mind of what my deathbed might be like. I've talked to my grandchildren about the fact that I wouldn't be here all that much longer and we can get on with the rest of my life and enjoy what, what I've got left. <laughs> I'm just hoping I'll have a quick cardiac arrest and it'll be good night Vienna from me. And I've had a wonderful life, so... I'm luckier than most. That's it.